All right. So select board organizational meeting. Um, election of officers. In that order, right? We're going to organize first and then elect. Um, we usually do election of officers first and then go through some of the other items we have to set up um, and, and agree to the meeting when we're going to meet, times, locations, um, where we post notices, those kinds of things. So, so yeah, so we, not. Exactly. Say what, John? Well, I, I was going to suggest that since we normally have our meetings at seven, why don't we dedicate this piece, the six to seven, to go walking through kind of the organizational thing that, that we're here to discuss. And then when we appoint, let's do that at seven at our normal meeting time, after we've kind of discussed all this. Um, and that way the officers know, you know, I don't know if we're going to get stuff nailed down, but they'll, they'll get a feel for um, where we want to be as a board going forward. I think that'd be better for those, you know, yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to move uh, to nominate Denise as chair. I want Denise to know what she's getting into. I'm going to move. I would like to move to have Sharon as vice chair. I want to make sure she knows what she's getting into. So we all know what's going on rather than appointing and then have people not know the lay of the land that they're kind of the leaders, the leadership, I guess, the appointed officers um, are going to be presiding over. Okay, so you're, suggest so you're suggesting that we change the order of the agenda? Does everybody yeah. agree to that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Rick? Sure. Rick, do you agree? Yes. Uh, Okay, I thought you were frozen. Cliff? Yes. Okay. All right, so do you want to take and review the proposed revised rules of procedure? Is that what you're suggesting, John? I wanna, I wanna suggest as I did in an email that rather than spending our time as an, in an editing session, at least not starting out as an editing session, that we, we allow ourselves time and just space to have a bigger conversation about about the things that I put in a memo to the board that I assume is available to the public. Um, what does it mean to be equals on the board? How do we put in place a framework that supports us all as equal equals and kind of anchors us? I think that might have been the word that John used when we hit on this briefly at our last meeting. Um, to me, to me, that conversation is, and framing in conversation is the backdrop to then looking at the, the, the document and seeing how it aligns with what we're talking about and where we might want to make changes. That would be my suggestion. Don't everybody speak at once. <laughs> it makes perfect sense to me. I mean, I, you know, to do that. Did John step away? Looks like it. Looks like it. I'm okay with that. There he is. Yeah, I, I would definitely support that. Uh, I don't think we should get into an editing session uh, here tonight, um, but if we can see if there's a, a consensus as to how we want to look towards organizing things, then we can talk about how we want to address editing the document, as it were. Yeah. Right. Right. Sounds, sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. I guess I can start because I'm the one who kind of you know put this this thing out there. Um, I. I am really hoping for a, a board construct that, that identifies each of us as leaders and owners is a, is a, you know, a word that comes to mind around different aspects of the 
business that the board takes on, we could make that list of what that looks like. Some of the stuff is obvious to all of us. Some of it may be, you know, kind of hiding sometimes off in the shrubs and it comes up every once in a while. But um, rather than, rather than, um, you know, right now it's like everything starts, everything starts with Denise. Denise gets the call and Denise is responsible for filtering and is it ready? Should it be on the board? Is it time? How do we have, how do we make time? Uh, delegating and not just one at a time delegating, not just one off delegating, but sort of structurally delegating that like we already have done in some ways informally, we've said, Cliff, you're our tech guy. <laughs> and, you, and, and you may not even want that job. As it turns <laughs> out, you're the expert on tech. And so we, we naturally delegate our tech work to, to Cliff and that's kind of known and understood. And we, we, could, and we could endorse that. Cliff is the tech guy, calls about tech issues um, is, is Cliff and he fields that and he assesses. John, you've, you've been highway at different times. Rick, I know you have background in highway uh, road maintenance. That could be an area of expertise for you. I have things that are naturals for me, Denise does. That's one thing that's part of my vision for how we work together. And then, and by doing that, I hope that we can get ourselves to a place where we can, we can keep our board meetings crisp and uh, focused. We can create actually more time to turn back to the policies that we have on the website. But in the four years I've been on the board, we haven't systematically looked at policies at all. And they are you know, that's something we should, that, that should be a backdrop for our governance is what are the policies, looking at them, keeping them current, and then all of us being very familiar with them and being able to apply them. So that would, so I'm looking for a way that we can delegate work more broadly. Each of us have a, a you know, a broader chunk of ownership and that that framework allows us to focus on the structure and the framework of our governance system in our town and that it drives a different approach to how we work together in our meetings. Do you put any level of like redundancy on that? I, I was like looking at the VLCT, you know, templates that you said and, you know, and they talked about this with say committee representation where you had one or two people designated and i'm not sure for us for continuity like let's and i'm just going to use transportation as an example do you and then we'll second who don't really do the work but are kept more up to date on exactly what's happening so if there are any continuity issues you know you're losing all of the expertise on one subject area if they have to leave for some reason or do right. leave, you know then you've actually got does it make any sense um, yeah yeah it it does in the sense that um we you know when we get around to or have a need to vote on something everybody on the board should feel comfortable with having enough and knowledge that, and information about a particular issue to um to vote in the town's best interest so that's right. I, yeah. so somebody that maybe is the transportation liaison person is would give um you know periodic updates to the board that doesn't mean we still wouldn't have um the road commissioner maybe give us updates on what's going on i see mm -hmm. it more as you know, like with you, for example, Rick, with you, with your transportation background, um, you were really helpful on, we had the roads committee that we appointed mm -hmm. and your work on the roads committee was really valuable and helpful. Um, so I can see things like that working. Some things I think are really full board issues that should be vetted and discussed in, at a meeting. Um, that doesn't mean somebody can't be a point person. Right. Right. Yeah. And I mean, highway is one where if we were, if we were going to adopt this model, I would say it's two people right from the get-go because it's half the town's yeah. budget. Right. I mean, it's huge. 
yeah. and other things. Yeah. And, and it's really complicated. It's complicated and it's any number of reasons. Other things, one person is probably fine unless unless every once in a while this, you know, it it's fine and, and then at some issue comes along and it isn't. And then that one person can say, this is bigger than a bread box, guys. I need a partner on this one to, you know, work with me outside the meeting, get this thing ripe for board discussion. It's complex. I want a second set of eyes and different brain. Um, yeah, but highway is one that would be to me is but, two, but, two people right away. And we've been in any of those controversial areas like that. That's I think really important because you, do, you don't want just one perspective. You're setting yourself up for trouble. You know, you, we know how controversial say that area is. So if you've at least got two people that are have some level of focus, the whole board needs to know. And that's that's the specialist job to make sure that everyone on the board is informed about to be able to make decisions. They don't make it in the blind. But right. I, having that check of any individual is a good idea, especially in places like that. You know how much. I mean, that's a little easier when you go to the public too, when you make a decision that some people might or might not like, you know, when you're not, you haven't made that in a vacuum as one person. So, you know, right. you're, you're, it's been more you're better vetted. I, well, and, and even if it's, if it's two people working on it, to me, the board still makes the decision yeah. and the board and the board still gets from that, that duo pros and cons options. Here's three options. The stuff that we've talked about in another context, here's the options, here's the pros, cons, costs, risks, and here's a recommendation. So, so the group has, it's, it's sort of both and. You're taking ownership, you're sifting and digesting the material, bringing it down to a place where there can be that discussion, but it's not all five of us kind of, you know, floundering through all the information, trying to figure out where are the nuggets. Mm -hmm. I yeah I can see I see what you're saying yeah um yeah. I also want to make sure that board members that it, and I'm not saying this as a negative towards anybody but I don't want to have information that's filtered one mm -hmm. to, to skew it one way or the other mm -hmm. well with Denise one person's filter is another is yeah um do you see what i'm saying right no i mean the facts the facts should be there but mm. i personally want somebody to make a recommendation because that's like to me like okay you hold that up do i like this recommendation does it make sense to me i have three questions oh i see how you got there um because that tells me that somebody and 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 sometimes that may not be possible sometimes you say okay there's two options Mm, I can't get all the way there on one or the other. I need I need a partner. We need the whole board discussion. But but a lot of times you can. A lot of times you can get down to on some yeah, yeah I would agree on some things we could. I think I think in almost all these cases the board makes a decision. I mean yeah. that person is only what they are doing, they're out there doing the homework and they're presenting right. that up and they present the pertinent facts. Denise's concern. I get con Denise's concern. We'll have to be careful about that ourselves, you know, and we'll all have to just, everybody has their biases on any subject. So it's a matter of what do we, maybe there's a way we approach that. You know, I, I if we're doubling it, you know, if have somebody that makes it a little easier because you've got a second set of eyes, but, um, you know, we, 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 we can, if we're not doubling it, we can still do that. I think there's, it strikes me that we want to, just build something into our process so that we're really keeping that objectivity in what we do. I know the, the VLCT handbook has a section um, and it says that, okay, as I looked it up today, it says that occasionally the board may designate a committee or a member to take on a various assorted task or duty. So that's, so they recognize that as well. Clifford, I would, I, yeah, I'll stop. Clifford, John, do you want to have a chance to talk? Uh, I'm, I'm good right now. Let's keep letting it roll. <laughs> okay, Cliff? 
Yeah, I, I agree that there are issues of import that um, it makes sense to have a couple of people overlooking them. I don't know that we need to go to the level of having somebody on the board um, appointed to oversee each of the um, committees that exist. I think when we appoint people to the committees, we trust them to be the experts and come to us when they need to, or we could even go back like we used to do uh, pre-COVID and um, periodically you know, ask them to come to meet with us and give us an update on their goings-ons and whatnot. And of course, any of us as members of the board or as members of the community have the ability to attend any of those meetings should there be something there that is of interest to us. Yeah, I mean, I periodically, I periodically have popped into cemetery commission meetings or um, conservation commission meetings, and everybody's always happy to see somebody from the board there. And you know, I think we do. I think we do need to, and we got, we kind of got lost track because of all the COVID stuff that we were dealing with. We used to have committee chairs or a representative of the a committee come in and talk to the board about what they have going on what's coming up you know what what resources do they need i personally like to hear from from those folks no that makes sense to me and yeah, then me if an, and then if there were an issue that one of those groups is grappling with then we could delegate somebody as our point person to to you know, do whatever, make whatever, like like with the town hall renovation committee, right? Where we yeah, recognize yeah. this is this is a bigger bigger thing. We can't spend all of our we can't spend even a lot of board time on it. So we flipped it and sent delegates off to be the point people from the board, and then occasionally we would hear from um, from the folks sure. on that committee. Yep. So we have so, so it's not something new. We have done this. And I don't know that um, we, I, used, I used to have a list of all of the different things. Well, so so that would be another opportunity, though, is to structure is to actually have a, you know, have somebody, maybe it's the chair, but maybe it's not the chair um, who is, you know, scheduling and keeping yeah, schedule, scheduling and making sure that we have space um, in our calendar that, you know, we're not just scheduling meeting by meeting, but we're actually, so that could be some, something that one of us takes on. Here's the calendar. Here's when we're going to look at policies. Here's, here's um, when we're going to meet with various folks in different committees so that we are creating, again, that, like, that bigger arc of how are we organized? What kind of space do we need to have on our calendars to, to just deal with the framework for our governance? Yeah. Um, so I wanna make sure that we get a chance to talk about some of the other pieces if we really are gonna vote about on leadership tonight. Um, so I think we should figure out like, okay, to me, I have a thought on what a next step is on this piece. And um, one, yeah, I'll, uh, my, well, I'll just put it out there again in the spirit of let, letting people react. Maybe that's easier than trying to think about it. Um, one, I want to hear that whoever, from whomever we elect chair, and Denise, if that's you, um, I want to hear a commitment from you. That we're gonna that we're going to put in place a framework that allows each of us to have, you know, one or several areas that we are owning, and that those are that the when we line that list up, everybody's number of things is equal, and that's one that's one thing that's really important to me. We can create that list um, another time, but I I do want to be sure that we are. You know that this is that this is a that this feels like a this feels like a shift because that's really what I'm looking for is something that feels like a shift. And I'm willing to work towards that shift because I don't want to have to do everything. 
there are certain things that I would like to continue to do, but I think it's good to have other board members commit to doing certain things and then commit to following through. Well, and then and then another thing that's on my list is the commitment from our, our whoever our board chair is that we are going to hire a select board assistant because the select board assistant to me is the person who can support all of us in staying on track, looking at the calendar, what is the calendar? Um, if we're gonna put this on the agenda, we've got to take something else off. Sharon, you promised to have this by Friday for the, to go into the meeting folder so everybody has a weekend to read it. Is it ready? You know, All of that to me is the function of a select board assistant to just keep, help us keep the trains running so that Denise, your job is to contribute like the rest of us on sub, whatever your subject is and to run the meeting on Monday nights. Well, I would like to be able to do my share of the work. Absolutely. Because believe so, it or not, I do have other irons in the fire. Yeah. I know, I know you have a lot of them. <laughs> well, it, it makes a whole lot of sense to have that. I think that analogy I use, it's like, do we, do we pay our town crews to haul sand or stone from some distant quarry so we're paying them as truck drivers or do we hire that out and to so that they can actually focus on the jobs that they're supposed to be doing you know and that's that kind of thinking denise's or the chairs all of our time is better spent you know on the task work itself and that's great if there's some ring person out there that can act as a as the signalman that's that's gathering all that keeping the you know like you said even those little deadlines that's really helpful to all of us you know so that's that kind of takes that off our plate that's that that busy work that just chews up our time i'd like us to i i tried to find it today and i know i put together a list a while ago when we had a um select board assistant before of what they might do i see what we really need in my mind is someone to manage grants and depending on cliff's future schedule we might really need somebody who is handling the it stuff i see those as two really big issues mm -hmm. um that we really could use some help on right now you know there's all kinds of grants floating around out there there's no chart you know i i envision a spreadsheet with a the name of the grant what it's for you know which is it for conservation commission is it for the, uh the roads you know what was it for how much is the amount you know some of those kinds of things like that that are really important for us to know for tracking purposes money you know where is the money going what's the match you know those kinds of things with grants i think we have fallen short on being able to track them the way I'd like to see us track them. That that could also be something that one of us does. That's a yeah. that's a perfectly delegate, you know, ownership kind of thing for a select board member to do. My agenda for the select board assistant is is to look at what are you doing, Denise. In a, in a role that it, in, to me has become very unclear. What do you do as chair? And what do you do as assistant? What I understand is that the chair's role is to facilitate the meeting, facilitate the meeting. And so all of the work that you do outside of that to keep the trains running, to me, should we should make a very clear decision about what of that is, are we comfortable keeping with the chair? And what of that needs to shift to the assistant? Because when you take all of that and you put it in one person, it's way bigger than the chair role. And I get, I for one at least get very confused about what is actually chair and what is assistant and why I'm uncomfortable with that is the assistant should report to the whole board and the chair doesn't report to the board. I see what I do right now is coming up with making the agenda. And I think that that's usually the case for chairs to do that, to have that, kind of big picture view um, of what what's going on in town. And that's just what I do right now. I mean, the I would, 
I see that chair too, not not just as a moderator. They're also, the, I mean, the way I've always seen this in most board, they're usually they're the point spokesperson too. So that and when when we're out talking to the public or other things, you know, that that way we're not having all these disparate signals. You got it's funneled through that person, that moderator, if you want to call it that. Karen, you know, that's you know, so they're. They're a little bit more than just a moderator. I'd leave, am I right in that, or am... you might be right in that? But but I feel like we've gone because Denise took on select board assistant for a while. Her her plate is very full, oh, and yeah. and the role is really unclear. I think we also need to find out from as if we're. When we get ready to make a list of what the select board assistant does, I still think that person being the funnel for grants and keeping track of them would help everybody, including the board and the road crew and any other committee or commission in town that has a grant. Um, it's really important to keep track of that because if we don't have a good tracking system for that, some one of these times we're going to get in a pickle and we're going to not be able to um, document or realize what our share of a grant is going to cost the town because we didn't file paperwork when we should. I mean, right now we've been, right. we've been lucky that we haven't missed any of those deadlines. Um, and I think we need to check in um, at some point with the office staff because there are certainly duties that um, the town clerk has has to do by statute, but we've had a really amazing office staff in that they've been willing to jump in and help out with other things that maybe aren't their statutory functions. So I think it's a bigger picture and a bigger conversation than what we can conclude tonight. There's, there's a lot of sense and really Matt, I know in the regional planning commissions, there was my work there. You know, we, our office manager was the grants manager and she kept the milestones. We all had grants and we actually helped establish that. But she monitored those because those are really important. If you miss those milestone dates and things, you can, you can lose your grant and or you know, cause big problems. So I don't know how we track it now, who, whether that's Judy or is that, is that um, I just don't know how our town government, you know, tracks all of the, you know, not just the accounting side of it, but the, but that agreement side, you know, when you're going to provide what. So, Rick, so just to give you a little background on that, um, there is, there are some tools in NIMRIC that allow us to uh, track grants to a certain extent, not to the level that you're talking about, though. So really the way it's working now is the different people who have taken on the task of applying for a given grant, it's up to them to make sure that we're hitting the deadlines and um, following through when we need to and submitting the correct uh -huh. paperwork at the correct time. There is no, other than the data that's available in NIMRIC, there's really no central resource for, uh, for us for all of that. We tried to create it at one point in time um, but that was back when we did have a, a select board assistant. So guys, love this, but can we can we put a pin in yep. the in the grants and recognize that this is an opportunity? Right. It's it is not the only opportunity. There are other opportunities. There are things that are not getting done, and there are things that are Denise that Denise has been doing that need to come onto the select board assistant. Um, and I'm just going to stop there. But Denise, again, before we vote, I want to hear you say that you are on board with doing some things differently. I think, um, I've so, already, I think Sharon, I think I've already said that several times. Yes, you have. And then I hear you deflecting into perhaps a different agenda. So, so forgive me for being maybe a little nervous about it. Um, I want, can we talk about running our, our meetings more succinctly and using a model where we've delegated work to happen outside as a way of crisping up what happens in the meeting. Can you explain what you mean? 
um, I can explain, but maybe others have experience with other meeting contexts where I don't have to be the only one talking. Rick, you've served on a number of, or oh, yeah. been to a lot of select board meetings in your previous um, employment opportunities. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I was shutting up just because I wanted to give everybody else a chance. <laughs> sorry. But yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree with Sharon. There's a lot, you can lose a lot of board time if it's all in the preparation. It's expectations about, you know, what we expect when we hear that as a board, you know, or, or if, you know, even among ourselves, if we're coming in, there should be that expectation of preparation and maybe, you know, that should be on the, you know, part of that agenda, you know, what, you know, we don't want to come in with a bunch of, you know, discontinuous information that we has to be sorted through. And I mean, it's not kind of what you're saying, Sharon, it's really being come in with a direct purpose, outline it and, you know, yeah. be your, so we can efficiently use our time. I would agree to that. Yeah. John? Well, you know, I, yeah. If I can chime in, I, I, circling back a little bit, backtracking a little bit to the select board assistant bit, you know, the select board assistant assists the entirety of the board. Um, I think it's so, you know, Rick mentioned grants, if we miss a deadline, that's been discussed, and that just one on a long list of things that a select board assistant would be engaged on, you know, five days a week, you know, mm -hmm. every week of the month. And so their job would be to, to keep those ticklers going and keeping us all apprised. And we would all, so if they're, so let's just say, Highway is a big program, both monetarily and just complicated. Um, and Rick and I were the point guys to deal with the highway using this, this methodology. Um, we would still, we would liaison, <clears throat> I would argue as much if not more with the administrative assistant. We would be the points, yes, but we might be saying, you know, you need to do this, you need to right. do that. And it wouldn't be the chair or the vice chair or the clerk of the board or whatever we decide to create position wise. It would be the individuals that are tasked with being the point uh, program point people. And, and then the administrative assistant, their job like to manage, manage the staff at the CVRPC, they, they would be doing the day to day um, and so I, I just think, Rick, your point drives home and underscores, and everybody in the select board agrees with this, but I'm just bringing it up. We've just, as a board, not, got, not gotten off the dime in terms of getting that position refilled. And we have it in our budget. I think it's really important we get this done. Um, so I can't underscore yeah. it enough. And I think a lot yeah. of the the issues or concerns or uh, ungainliness, the stumbling and the inefficiencies uh, will be kind of worked out of the system if we, if and when we hire, when, not if, but when we hire a select board assistant that's qualified and competent to do the job. And those are all important. I, you guys may have already done this too, but I don't know if you've, that job description, the kind of person we're looking for, I mean, the first thing we should all be doing is looking at that comprehensive picture of what they're gonna, we're going to be asking them to do. If it's going to be partly grants management, is it going to be, you know, all the board related business that they have to organize calendar and things like that? Because we're going to have to look for those skill sets. And then we have to, we, we have effectively become the, we become the task manager for that person because they can only handle so much. So we're going to have to, really modulate that, you know, it's because it's, it's one person. Is it is a full-time or part-time position. You yeah, know, I, so. think it, it, it's I think budgeted it's budgeted for part-time. Yeah, I think we're looking for part-time. And it may, you know, I think the position could grow depending on who who is in it and what we mm -hmm. find is really helpful and what isn't helpful. I don't want to have a disconnect. Um I don't want to have a disconnect between hearing from members of the community who elect us to these positions 
and an assistant. Does, am I making any sense? Um, I still want to have, I still, you know, we're local government. We're boots on the ground, in my opinion. We do need some assistance with somebody to do some particular duties. And I think we need to figure out what those are. And it may evolve as we move forward in what we think um, that person, you know, what, what, it, what we find is really helpful and what maybe isn't helpful. I think it's gonna evolve. Mm -hmm. Cliff, did you wanna chime in at all? Been very quiet. Yeah, um, I think we are all in agreement that uh, workloads could be shifted around and distributed more evenly, uh, regardless of whether that's through the redistribution amongst the members of the board or amongst the members of the board, as well as bringing in the um, position, the select board assistant. Um, I think we have all already stated that we are on board with the idea of bringing in a select board assistant because we voted to include that in our budget for the coming fiscal year. We increased the line item to allow some room for that to happen. Um, I think we are also all in agreement that of course there's always opportunities for improvement and that we should constantly be looking to streamline our processes and procedures to make them as efficient as possible. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that idea. And, uh, you know, being able to have shorter meetings, I don't think any of us are going to vote against that. So, um, you know, this is a good discussion to have. Um, the other thought that comes to my mind is with regards to this uh, select board assistant, we, we, we can look at the things that you know, when Jonathan left, um, things that he did got distributed to different people. Yes, Denise took on some of that, but so did the office staff. So we really need to go back to the drawing board, as Rick suggested, and create that profile of what we want, what we need, and what does that person look like. And Depending upon that scope, I mean, if you do the math of what we budgeted, that's definitely not um, pay for a full-time position. And if no. we determine that whatever we want this to be, looks like it should be a full-time position, then we're gonna have to find, figure out where we're gonna find the money to do that. And that's why I think starting with a part-time person, and I agree with what you've said, the workload did get distributed because I have a list that I will find when Jonathan left, where we divvied up some of the the work, and I I know I have it, I just can't put my hands on it right at the moment. But that could help us with deciding and making a list of what we see as items that we would delegate to an administrative assistant. Um, what items different board members might want to take on or do. I don't think we can decide here tonight exactly what that is going to look like. And some of those things that we distributed to other parts of our organization, we may decide we want to keep them there. For example, um, HR duties went to Sandra. Yep. And I think that's a pretty good place for them to be. Right. Yeah, she, yeah, she does a really good job with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we um we increased her position from 80% to 100 to absorb those things that she'd taken on from the from the select board assistant plate and yeah i haven't i don't think any of us has any reason to think that those need to come back i'm i i hear the the agreement and i appreciate that i what i worry about is whether we have the discipline as a group to continue our focus and put a framework in place and then the discipline to stick to that framework. Doing well, shorter meetings and, and having a timed agenda, those are things that require, require will, will for us to be, for the length of our meetings will require a framework and, and a discipline to evolve and um, reshape how we, how we do it. I think we need to have time 
my, I don't know if we can have time at every agenda, but I think until we figure all this out, we should have this as a regular agenda item, either between seven and nine, or that we agree we're gonna meet at 6.30 or something at the beginning of, before each regularly scheduled meeting so that we keep on track and we keep this in the forefront. So the four things that I put in the memo to the board that I want to be sure that we have a commitment to reframing is how we run our meetings, um, a commitment to a framework where the board uh, works together, each of us as equals. And I don't, I don't, I want to say out loud, we all vote. Um, never ever would I say that we don't all vote on things. Of course we do. And we, we spend a lot of time collaborating, but the work that happens outside the, you know, I'll take a run at that. That is, that is always Denise. And I feel like I, you know, I want that to be something very, mm -hmm. very evenly distributed and from the get-go that it's not one-offs. It's, you know, that we each have a, a whatever the, whatever the noun you want to pick. Um, that all of this allows us to reset Denise back to being a peer on the board, facilitating the meetings um, by us taking work on and hiring a select board assistant. And then my fourth point was prioritizing hiring a select board assistant to work with us, support us, um, et cetera. Yeah, and just for the record, I see myself as a peer on the board. Cliff, want to say something? Yeah. Um... I am more comfortable if we frame that, Sharon, as redistribution of workload. Mm -hmm. I too believe that Denise is a peer, but she does more than her fair share of work. And I'm I'm just more comfortable framing it that way. Thank you, Cliff. And that's all an outgrowth of our having lost our assistant. Um, and and I can't go too far down the path, but also while we had an assistant, the 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 uptake by that assistant wasn't at the level we had hoped it would be, and it didn't occur as timely as we had hoped it would be. So Denise was, you know, keeping the balls in the air that are necessary to keep the town running. So without Denise's help, we would have been a a whole load of trouble. So, um, but you know, it all kind of to me. To my mind, you know, the it seems to be a friction point, and the friction point is not Denise or this idea. The friction point is the the same friction point we had prior to hiring a select board assistant, and you pan back, and is that there's a lot more workload than there was even 20 years ago um, or 10 years ago, and it it can no longer be absorbed by a volunteer board. We're seeing this in, in so, across so many institutions uh, and these town institutions select boards are just but one example. Um, and we all understand that. And so therefore, that's why we came to, to the conclusion we needed an assistant, a full-time assistant. We have paired off some of the duties of that assistant, as has been said to Sandra. There might be some other duties that have been realigned, but um, so let's, let's really focus in time with this effort to getting that ad out and getting this person hired. I mean, we've lost highway crew and bang, yes, it's been painful. And then sometimes it seems a long time, but in, in reflection as compared to the select board assistant, it's been like rocket speed and the select board assistant position has been frankly vacant for three, excuse me, three plus years. So all of us need to be mindful that we, we're, we're not being as uh, diligent about getting that thing out in the press, out in, in the world and getting interviews going. We need to get going on this. Um, and so I think a lot of the, the issues will be cured with that. Yeah, I would agree with you, John. So um, um, not to be the clock watcher, but I am. We have 10 minutes before seven. I was just making a list of what I think are the next steps. One is to make a list of subject areas and functions 
that we can delegate to specific people. So we've talked about highway. We know tech could be cliff. There's others. So I think all of us putting our thinking caps on what does that list look like? And, and if we're going to meet next week, um, then that can be, that is a crisp, clear next step for us. That helps to illuminate uh, what we can do and what a select board assistant can do. And then we need a select board job assistant job description. Yeah, we can go back and find the last one, Sharon, that you and I, I think you and I worked on that. I don't think I did. I was new on the board, really, really new. Oh, okay. I know you and I did some interviews. No, we can, we can, no, I'm pretty sure you and I interviewed, but maybe. maybe it was, I mean, I think everybody should be involved right, sure. in hiring the assistant. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Sharon interviewed the treasurer, I believe. Oh, maybe Am that's I what right? it was. I think With I can Judy. go. Yep. That sounds maybe familiar. Yeah. Denise, one, I think one of the things is for you, going back to the point you made earlier about putting it all out there, like, I think you have to take it upon yourself because you're the only one who knows everything you do to just like make lists and I'll ask you would you please do that with and take your filter of off off of well I want to keep doing that you know you put it on the list you could make a little star I want to keep doing that I like doing that but but let's look at the whole list of what does Denise do so that we all have that information because I'm sure there's a lot you don't you do that doesn't really even ever hit our radar so to, for us to all understand that to the point of, of you know, we're volunteers, mm -hmm. you're a volunteer and wanting to be sure that we can sustain the work of the town. So my list is the, um, a list of subject areas functions that we can, you know, think of as discrete. Yeah, um, yeah, a select second. board, yep. I wanna make sure that Katie's getting this in the minute, share. Yep, uh, that was not one thing. A select board job description that I think comes after the first thing because we kind of want to understand what's the scope of work. And part of that second one was Denise, you making a list of what does Denise do right now? Um, and then from there, we'll get to, I guess we could look at this before then. Um, and that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of a larger framework, but that's something that we still have to do is adopt our guidelines for how we work, right? Right, but that's not gonna probably, we need to, to really not. all look at that and discuss it. Right. So I see that as something we need to do very soon. I don't know if, I don't know that we'll have, to, I don't know if we'll have time tonight to do that. Can no, I, I was I mean, yeah. Can I just say one quick thing so we before we get out of the assistant hiring? I mean, I'm I'm not sure, Cliff. Can we in our shared folder? Do we are they, is that like Google Docs where we can share writing in a document? I would suggest yeah, yeah. if it is, then I suggest we put a document in there that for that position and we list in by and prioritize. You know what we're going to ask them to do to start. That's going to grow. We're going to fill that pot up to its full mark eventually, but where, what are we going to ask them to do? And then that tells us what we're, how, what we're primarily looking for in that person. You know, we're going to, that's, that becomes our scope. We should be doing that right away. Cause that, if we get the right person, we really get good money. You know, we get good value for what we put into it. Go ahead. Right. And, and remember right now we've only budgeted for part time. So the list may be two phase. Right. Maybe, Absolutely. maybe what we want them to do immediately and what the position could grow into. That's why I said we prioritize it. You know, yeah. we start with those primary functions and then we add it up to the plate, the point where their plate is full. You know, we fill that based on their skill sets and then as they grow in expertise too, you know, they become more efficient, so. Yeah. Yeah, if I might, I, I, would, I was gonna say exactly what Denise said, um, but just to, to put a finer point on it, I think the job description should be the description of the full-time position, meaning the entire set of duties are in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we say, Absolutely. Yeah. At, at the part-time, it's this subset we're gonna focus on, but these, are, these remain also your duties, but the select board will assign you uh, 
certain areas of the entire of the fuller description uh rec acknowledging that you're uh, uh, operating in a part-time capacity so i yeah. just wanted in here because we could find that some of that stuff gets picked up by us or migrate somewhere else and we want that in the job description because we don't want the person to say hey when i was hired this wasn't in my job description and i'm not agreeing to that mm -hmm. and i'm yeah. So it need, and as Denise always says, other duties as assigned. But it's well, good I agree to have with you completely on that. That's the whole idea of the kind of prioritizing is that's going to be what they're starting with. But we have to ask that. We have to ask for all of it in their qualifications. Yeah, you're right, John. So yeah, Cliff, did you have any comments? Yeah. Um, thanks. Let me uh, lower my hand here. I'll um. I'll create a uh, folder in the personnel uh, portion of the shared drive uh, called Select Board Assistant. I'll populate it with a document that we can use as a bucket for catching these uh, mm -hmm. things we want this person to accomplish. And that way everyone can, if something comes to mind, you can just jump into the folder yeah. and punch in your bullet point. Uh, once you find a copy of the um, previous job description we can put that in there as well and put mm -hmm. it in as an archive for reference rather than a working document and we can then use that to create a working document that uh, assigns these new duties that we imagine uh, for what we ultimately see to be a full-time position yeah i think i think if i can find that job description or the ad that we originally had will help us to come up with the list of duties and prioritize. Hey, you know who could find that? Who? Rose. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but I can look through my my Word document folders as well. I don't, yep. And all, you know, I think there's also um, an opportunity to maybe create, um, and I think Cliff might have some input on this, create a template for policies and procedures so that they kind of all that they're standardized i guess yeah, uh, yeah. i can definitely uh provide some assistance with that because that's what i'm used to seeing in every yeah. place else i've been yep but 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 that's a template right but that but that yeah that's that's actually i'm going to write that down um and that to me ties together with a template and then also just what's the what's the framework and a schedule. I'm going to I'm going to start building a list of functions but also there's some little projects, right? What we're talking about around policies is a little project <laughs> that mm -hmm. needs some needs some attention and we can work through our little project and then it can hum, but right now it's a project. And I'll try to start keeping track on a list of what I do. And I, you know, I just have to say um, that when we no longer had an administrative assistant and I took on some of the duties and responsibilities, I did it for the town. And, I, and I'm sort of feeling a little bit like no good deed goes unpunished. So often, so true, I'm just Denise. I'm just saying I'm, I don't I don't have any expectation and don't want any comments. That's just how I am somewhat feeling, and I think that you need to respect that. You know, I'm sorry you're feeling that way, Denise. If anything, this I, from my perspective, I know this would be more about how do we ease that load. I mean, and get you doing you know, free up that time that we best use your time, you know, where we best use it and not have you doing things that are just taking away, you know, that it's a huge load on you and it's, and it's not particularly productive in the end. That's not your doing. That's the, you know, that's just kind of efficient use of time and personnel. You know, that's where, I mean, that would be the intent. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing that you've done all this quite frankly that's a lot of work like i said i did it for the benefit of the town because i care mm -hmm. about the town 
Um, Denise, all right. So Denise, seven... wait, hang on, Denise. I do want to respond to that point. I I know I know that that's where I know that that's the spirit in which you do what you do for the board and what you do for you don't do it you don't do it for us you do it for the town and that's that's appropriate my concern and worry as i have said before is that nobody could step in and do what you do and that really scares me yeah i think you're going to find that anybody could step in and do what i do but um i guess we need to at seven o'clock we need to move on if everybody's ready and in agreement. To I, I, I need I need to respond, Denise, to that last comment you said. Uh, I don't. I agree with Sharon. I don't think anyone on this board, counting, who here is has. I I don't believe that anyone other than you could do all the things that you do for this board, um, <laughs> in terms of having the time to do it and the. I'm, I'll say it right there, the initiative. I don't have the initiative you do um, on behalf of the town. I, my feeling is I would, I, I will do so much. And then after that, it, it, we need to hire someone. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think it's, it's a problem. And as I said before, if Denise chooses not to run again, or Denise doesn't want to be chair anymore, or, you know, Denise's life gets more complicated than it is right now, and she can no longer do this. And it's a sudden thing. Sudden things are happening at our age in our life, and it's not necessarily our immediate person. It's the folks that surround us who are also aging with us. Right. People that are important to our, our, you know, functioning as families and friends and community. And if God forbid Denise just couldn't do what she's doing and it happened like that. We'd be in a whole world of hurt big time. Um, I know Denise would just not go to sleep for and try to do everything, but that that's not a good place to be. And we need to have a framework that's there. And then, you know, Denise as the chair maybe takes on more responsibility uh, depending how we, we, parlay all this out but at the end of the day it there's just too much responsibility in one person i wouldn't want it in any person if cliff said hey i'm retired and i love all this stuff and i want to do everything for you i would have a the identical objection mm -hmm. um be, because it's not about the person it's about the piling of responsibility into one pot into one member of this board and with that it's not the intention becomes, it does become, and Denise has been good not to take advantage of this, but it also with a lesser person becomes a power shift and it moves power into one board member. We are all equally elected. We all represent constituencies that like us for better and worse and oh, yeah. want us on board representing Right, or not, right? <laughs> Representing those interests on this board. And if there's a board member, and I'm gonna keep using Cliff, um, and Cliff's guy doing everything, and you know, I get a call from <laughs> Joey Jones up on the hill, you know, why is Cliff doing everything? Um, I, I'm gonna say, why don't you do more? I can't take that on. And you know what? Why don't you run for chair? I could never run for chair under the current state, not that I want to, but if I did want to, I couldn't do it. And I don't think anyone else could do it if they felt that eh, maybe it's time to pass the mantle. Maybe it's time we get a different feel on the board. No one can do that because we have it all piled up on our current chair. And it, it, it just, it creates an imbalance. Denise has been doing yeoman's work, keeping the balance, <coughs> which is like we'll do. But uh, at the end of the day, there is at very least there's a perception of imbalance, and you know, and bottom line is, Denise get, is going to get blamed for all the mistakes that the rest of us make, um, and we've already seen that. So that's another reason you don't want it all on one member of this board's plate. So I'm off and my I'm, box. Yeah. And I'm agreeing that we need to look at all of the duties, parse them out, make things more equal. So I'm I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying. Cliff. Yeah, just to add to the other comments, um, 
the board members have made, um, and I'll be brief because we do need to get to our next uh, agenda items. But I just want to add to that. Uh, thank you for your commitment to the town, Denise, and for what you do. And I definitely agree with everyone that uh, if there is an opportunity <coughs> to level out the workload, we should look at that and make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is it, and I think it's my clock. The power went out the other night and my clock is flashing. So I have 7 to five. looking down and seeing what time it is. 7.05. All, right. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. So we called the meeting to order. It's seven o'clock. And as we have on our agendas regularly, is there public comment for items not on the ad agenda or any additions or changes to the agenda? And we already made a change that we would at seven o'clock um, do some of the other items noted under the organizational meeting. All right, hearing nothing, I guess that means we're ready to move on to um, the organizational portion of the meeting. Election of officers. I, I would like to move uh, and looking for a second uh, that we appoint Denise Wheeler as chair. I second. Okay, we need to take a roll call vote. Um, Cliff? Aye. Rick? Rick, you uh, got a vote. <laughs> oh, yes, I said yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, it, and according to COVID regulations, now that we're doing meetings on Zoom and it's a forum of the board doing it on Zoom, we have to do each thing that we do, we have to do a roll call vote. I'm sorry, I didn't explain that. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Is there so a proper response to... then? I said yes, but- uh... Yeah, yep. John? Yes. Okay, Sharon? Yes, I. Okay, and I'm going to abstain and not vote for myself. Okay, um, Vice Chair? I would nominate Sharon Fannin. Okay, I'll, I'll second, second that. Or did he second? Okay. Okay, let's take a roll call vote. Cliff? Aye. I'm an aye. Rick? Yes. Sharon? I'll abstain. Okay, John? Yes. Okay, some other organizational stuff that would be good to get done tonight if everybody has, thinks we have a couple minutes to do this. We just need to set our official meeting dates, time, and location for the ensuing year. Um, we've normally been meeting on the second and fourth Mondays, unnormally um, and normally at seven, depending on if there's other items that we need to do. Um, and we had been meeting at the town office, had to change to Zoom. So, um, whenever things open up, I assume we would probably be meeting at the town hall, but we can probably make that decision later on, depending on how things sugar out with COVID. Is okay. everybody good with the second and fourth Monday? Yeah, at six o'clock, do you name a time too? We yeah, do. usually we meet at seven. Sometimes seven. we have to meet a, a little at a different, a little bit different right. timing. Um, and then, I, are we going to vote on all of that, or do we even have to? I don't, you know, I don't know that we probably should at the end vote on all of these things instead of maybe doing a roll call vote for every one of these items. We could do it at, as a block. I just on the on the meeting time seven is great, and I just want to say um, as an aspirational goal, not something that we're going to carbon stone tonight, but aspirational goal that our meetings are from seven to nine. That would be a great goal. Yes. Um, okay. Locations for posting notices where what we've been where we've been posting is East Callis Post Office because the store is now closed. Uh, Maple Corner store, um, the town office, the town website and front porch forum. So I would recommend that those seem to be the locations that 
um, people know that that's where they're going to be. Front porch forum is probably our best option. Um, it gets, I think it gets to the most people. Um, we're supposed to choose a newspaper of record for public notices. Um, and Judy, you can maybe chime in on this. I think we've been using Times Argus and Hardwick Gazette. So I think the Hardwick Gazette gets to a lot of people in Callis. Is that where we've been posting things? Um, we've been doing Times Argus. Um, uh, you know, the Hardwick Gazette is not a hard, a paper anymore. It's just online. Um, yeah. And I don't, you know, I, I can't, I don't know. I don't think you've been posting, I mean, just like employment notices and that sort of thing. But yeah, is that I mean, different? If we're doing an employment notice, don't we just decide where we're gonna post right. it? Right. Well, right. This, and this, this says newspapers of record for public notices. So a public notice could be an ad for employment. It could be, you know, we're looking to buy 5,000 yards of gravel. I mean, I think it could be any notice. But, okay, but we right. can say it's the Times Argus. Yep. And that's the one of record, mm -hmm. which doesn't preclude us if we decided we wanted to put something in Harvard Gazette here and there. I mean, I think right. isn't the point of, of notice so that somebody who is wants to see what we're up to they know the one place to go and they're always going to find it right and that would be the probably the times mm -hmm. argus i think most most people or businesses or anything in the area probably use the times argus but that doesn't preclude us from using other sources like the world or the hardwood gazette that's what i was going to say is the world i think reaches more people in central vermont but um i don't know how many that's towns actually, use that i think yeah, but the the problem with the world is that it's weekly, and I think Times Argus still is still is Times Argus still daily. It is some days it's paper and some days it's online only. Yeah, I know when we when we publish it, notices of DRB hearings and things like that, we use the Times Argus. Mm -hmm, so I right. think that I think that's a standard that everybody's used to. Right. I don't hear us saying we're going to drop Times Argus. I think isn't again the point is to say this is our this is our official newspaper. Right. And if you want to see what we're up to, the Times Argus is the place to go. And by taking Hardwick Gazette off, the impact is don't count on it. But we can always choose to use it if we feel like it, right? right. Yeah, we just need to mm -hmm. designate a paper of record. So I think and that's there only that's, needs that's, to be one, not two. Yeah, I think that, and I think the Times Argus is the go-to. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's vote on that block of items if everybody's ready to do so. The, I would second, the second and fourth? Yeah, seven at seven. Locations for postings we did. Katie, do you wanna read that back, please? Yes. So I, I would write, somebody made a motion to approve items B and C, because I'm keeping a little list. Item oh, okay. B is official meeting, schedule, official meeting schedule. The select board set the Zoom virtual call as their official meeting place on second and fourth Mondays of each month at 7 p.m. Sharon Wynn Fannin noted an aspirational goal to set meetings to last from 7 to 9 p.m. Item C, should I keep reading or did anyone want to say something? No, go ahead. I, no, go ahead. Item C, official posting locations for agendas will be at the town office, East Callis Post Office, Maple Corner Store, and electronically on Front Porch Forum. The newspaper of record for public notices shall be the Times Argus. Did you, in your list of posting locations, did, maybe I just didn't hear you, would be the town office and the town website? Town office, East Callis Post Office, the Maple Corner Store, electronically on front porch forum and i'll add the town website yeah yeah because you post the notices on the calendar there so that's really a good place for people to go to to see what's going on so i would move that block of items is there a second a second okay okay any further discussion or comments all right, Cliff, you ready to vote? I am, and I will vote aye. Okay, and I'm an aye. Rick? Yes. 
Sharon? Yes. John, the yes. Sharon? Yes. Okay. Um, one other thing that we should do tonight um, is have the delegation of people that are going to be signing off on orders. Um, it had been Cliff, Rose, and I. And I'm just thinking logistically what could work. I know Cliff lives on County Road. Rick lives just off County Road. And I don't know whether or not it's, you know, Rick, it's a, and I don't know about other board members, if other board members think they want to um, be responsible for committing to signing and getting things moved around to another person. But it's a good opportunity for Rick to learn stuff that's going on with the board by signing off on the orders. Just to explain the process so Rick understands it, what we normally Pre-COVID, Rick, the orders were circulated at the regular meetings and all of the select board members would sign off on them. Sure. Uh, yeah. when, when we were forced into our current situation, we agreed that as long as we could get at least three members of the board to sign off on them, that would uh, meet the intent. And so um, by trial and error, we ended up with a process where uh, basically Denise picks them up from Sandra at the town office. She reviews them, signs off on them, uh, goes back to Sandra if there's any questions on anything, gets clarification. Once they're ready to go in her eyes, then she notifies me they're available for pickup. I drive over to her place, pick them up, and then I review them and sign them. And at that point, I would then ping Rose and say, okay, I've got another batch of orders for you. And then she'd come over to my place and pick them up and uh, review them, sign off on them, and drop them back off at the town office. Oh, yeah. Does yeah. that make can I just that... Can I just add something? Sure. <laughs> I just want to add how well that's worked from my perspective. <laughs> early, early on, we were trying to do a rotational that was, you know, where each of us had them, and I... I am terrible at, at getting over to the town office, picking them up, that, that whole logistics thing. Just so I appreciate that Cliff and Rose and Denise made that happen. Rick, it's, it's up to you and, and, I, and I could you know, make another run, but mostly I'm really thankful that, that uh, th those three made it work. Yeah, so you you would you would want me to be the lead to kind of pick those up, and then we'd still have the three people reviewing, correct? I no, mean, I we would do the kind of the same process where you would pick up where Rose left off with picking okay. them up from Cliff. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'm glad to do that. I'm used to dealing with board orders from yeah. So it, yeah, so so um, this is, I mean I think it'll be a good way for you to sign and see what's yeah. what's going on. It's really I think it's really helpful. All right, so would somebody like to move that item? I, I would love to. <laughs> Can I, I, sure. I, make the, I make the motion that the board, until we're meeting again in person, that the board delegate to Cliff, Rick, and Denise uh, reviewing and signing the board orders. Is there a second? I'll second, second. it. Okay, let's vote. Cliff. Aye. I'm an I. Rick. Hi. John? Hi. And Sharon. Hi. And you know, if there's if there's something that comes up that I've found that's an issue, I will ask Sandra and then a lot of times I will update the board at a meeting of something that, that I found or had a question on so that there's a clear communication. So right, that, is, that's a, is that a monthly? How often are we doing? Are we doing weekly, bi weekly, like, monthly? It's like every it's it's been pretty much like every other week. So bi weekly, yeah. It's yeah. in a billing cycle. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. And also just to keep it from stacking up. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, is I don't see Toby's not on, right, Cliff? No, he's not, but Alfie is with us. Okay. Um where I don't see him. Or the, uh, you or don't there. see him, but he's there. Oh, there he is. I see him. Yeah. There he is. Alfred, you there? I'm coming. <laughs> hmm. There you go. There you are. How yeah. are you? I'm well. How are you? 
Good. Good. How are things? Uh, good. Good. We are entering our fifth season. Very fifth se mud season, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, they're talking 50 degrees. Oh, yeah, I heard that. And rain right. on Friday. Oh, boy. I heard, free I heard freezing rain, Alfred. Well, that could very well be. Uh, <laughs> you know, in the evening, it drops down to that magical temperature, so it's very yep. likely that we do get some freezing rain. Do you have any other updates for us? <clears throat> Uh, well, I could talk to you about uh, employees. Okay, I, I'm be back in like 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay, it's, it's nothing bad. <laughs> is this, yeah, Alfred, this isn't something that needs to be an executive session. I don't think so, no. Okay. It's just about dates for upcoming, you know, upcoming dates for things that everybody knows about. So do, should I wait for Denise to come back? No, you can go ahead. I think you can keep going. Oh, okay. So uh, Tyler has got a test date for his license on March 17th. So he's been operating under his permit. Um, so he's able to, with his permit, he's able to drive the little half ton truck to, or the three quarter ton truck we got. It's a one ton truck actually, but it's the smallest truck that we have. He's legal to drive that. So I've been using him there until, until he gets his license. Um, so on the 17th, that's gonna happen. This phone is gonna stop. Sorry about that. Um, so on the 17th, he's going to, get his hopefully pass his license he's going to use a town truck to take that license with um and so then he should be all up and running um the other date that stands out in my mind is bruce is going to be vaccinated on the 18th i guess he's got a, an appointment for that um so with that everything is falling into place, things are working out there. And I have to have to say that um, given the, some of the challenging circumstances, I appreciate um, what you've done to keep the roads maintained. Yeah, I think we've kept up with it um, for the most part. Um, my hat goes off to Ed Rowell. I mean, if, without him, we would have been in serious trouble. Yep. Um, just because he was there and he knows the roads, he knows, you know, he was a very large help uh, during this situation. Yep. We owe him a huge world of thanks. So yeah. maybe, I'll, maybe I'll get a, maybe we'll, we could do a thank you letter. Yeah. Yeah, it's something. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm just, I'm just. I mean, I know he's getting paid, but a thank you is always nice. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, he he wants to be part time, and you know, when when Bruce went out, he automatically became full time. He was there like every day. Okay. Yep. And so that's why I want to recognize him a little bit, uh, because I certainly appreciate him being there um, through the through the bulk of the winter. Yep. So, All right. Any anything else? Um, no. I mean, I think everything is business as usual. Um, like I said, month season's about to start. There's, uh, not, there's not much I can do at first until it starts getting real deep. I have started to uncover my gravel pile, so I can thaw out and I can get into some decent gravel uh, for when it does when it does really loosen up because um, yeah. the pit the pit won't open for a while yet um, so I've got a pretty sizable pile of gravel there in stock so we'll be set for that um, yeah let's hope for a gradual mud season and not bottom fallout yeah yeah well I mean it's looking that way right now cold at night 
warm during the day. I mean, that's yeah. what the doctor orders really. Um, but yeah, if we get three days of 60 degrees and not freezing at night, that's when we're going to be in trouble. Right. Um, right. But. And I, I apologize. I forgot to, you probably know Rick, but he's, um, <laughs> yes. Hi Rick. How are you? Good. 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 I want to get together with you really soon, by the way. So I'll call you. Sure. The next sure. sure. Things I want to. Yeah. Yeah. You come by anytime or call me and we'll line something up for sure. Sounds good. Great. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Alfred? I can't think of anything. I'm getting some estimates for a couple of grants that Toby and I are working on. Um, and I'm still in search for a used truck to pick up. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping now that town meeting has passed for a lot of towns, there might be one available that one town is trading in or whatnot so yeah i'm still pursuing that but Good. not a lot of not a lot of decent trucks out there right now yeah and we want to make sure that it's better than what we're replacing absolutely right and so and don't forget you know when you find something you know the questions that we're going to ask yeah and you know those kinds of things is what we'll be looking for so that we can do things efficiently and yeah. make a decision and also yeah. with and also with the grants um toby sent around a, a list today which you saw yeah. so it would be you know just to for you and toby to be aware so that you're providing the board with information so we can make a decision um at a meeting information ahead of time for review and that we can put in the public folder um, of what the grant is for, how much, what's the town share, you know, those kinds of things are information that we're going to be asking for in order to make, you know, an informed decision. Right, right. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm getting estimates right now since that's all part of the, for applying for the grants. So once I get the estimates, that will tell us the town share and all that stuff. Okay. All right. Um, are you guys hearing anything about the roads that I should hear about or know about? Um, no, no, that's why I said, I think, yeah. thank you to you for making sure with the challenging employee status that you, you know, the roads have been, I haven't heard complaints. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm not I, hearing. Anything. I have, I, I have. <laughs> Let me guess. They, no, 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 no need, no need, okay. but. I'm not doing my job as as citizen uh, member of the select board if I don't say Alfred, please be careful of the trees when you're snow plowing. That is the end of my public service announcement. Okay, thank you. I, yeah. All right. Anything else, Alfred, or anybody from the board, or the anybody else that's here want to ask? Cliff. Cliff, you're on mute. Any progress on the uh, temp front? On the who front? On uh, the the temp yeah. employee part time oh, whatever. Temp. We're I have it. I have heard absolutely nothing. Okay. Um, it's been in for I think it's going on the second week now, and I have gotten zero calls on that. Hmm. Um, and like I said, it's it's a tough spot to fill because it's hard to find somebody for just part time um and to be on call yeah so yeah. i i have nothing to report about that nobody's called nobody's showed any interest at all okay well yeah i'm but, sure you'll keep searching yeah well i'm gonna keep putting the word out and and searching verbally but i think we should probably stop advertising as it's costing the town money every time we do that mm -hmm. um so we'll just let the advertisement uh cease and I'll keep spreading the word verbally and hopefully the right person will, will jump up. Have we posted anything on Front Porch Forum about this? Uh, it was on Front I'm Porch sorry, Forum. I'm sorry, Sharon, I didn't see your hand up. It was on Front Porch Forum when we advertised the rest, you know, the, the, with the, in the other places. Yeah, because, you know, somebody, 
we could maybe get folks from neighboring, somebody from a neighboring town to post it on their front porch forum. I'm thinking Woodbury, Worcester, East Montpelier, you know, Marshfield, if we could have a standardized posting for front porch forum, we could see if we could get other towns, somebody from another town to post it for us, maybe a town clerk from another town or something that might right. help spread the word. Right. Um, I've done I've done that with other things not select board related and it does help. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Um, but I think other towns are in the same boat. You know, everybody's yeah. trying to have trying to have extra guys to drive a truck. And I talked to Guthrie in East Montpelier today, and he's he's got no spare guys. I mean, he's got just his his everyday crew, and that's it. He has had none all yes. all winter. Wow. Um, so it's it's not it's just not an easy spot to fill. You know, it's got to be somebody that's either retired or and wants a little bit more, you know, income or you know, it's just a tough spot to fill. Mm -hmm. But okay. I will continue to look and see what I can see who I can uh, rustle out of the out of the woods. Yeah. Look under the look, you know, rattle the rattle the leaves and shake the bushes. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I have to comment about. Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody? Anybody mm -hmm. else? Mm -hmm. Do you want me? Do you want me on for the stormwater? uh plan that's on the agenda well it's not on the agenda yet because it hasn't been um waiting for pam to okay. set a time but when she does yes you should definitely participate yeah okay i just thought it was on the agenda for tonight yeah no I must have misread it i read it somewhere it must have been yeah. or something yeah okay i guess if there's nothing else you're welcome to stay uh, yeah, no, I think I'll go eat supper if you're if you're done with me for the evening. Okay, and anybody else have anything? Uh, Alfred, oh. just for clarification, you did read it on the agenda, but it's under the at the bottom of the agenda as a future agenda item. Okay. So you're not hallucinating. Yeah, you're not. You know, yeah, you didn't. <laughs> well, you, you know, not sometimes I, I I work a lot of hours. I sit in a truck a long time, so <laughs> sometimes I. <laughs> I don't read things clear, but yes, I, I knew I read it somewhere. But yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's there, but it's just not tonight. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good night, all. You too. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Alfred. Take care. Bye. Bye now. So we have next our annual um, renewal of liquor licenses. We have Adamat Co-op and Maple Corner Store, and they're in the folder if Katie or Cliff wants to call them up. We do this um up. yeah we do this annually and they have to be done by I think it's April 5th but I'm not positive. So we have time but it's good to just get them done. And both entities have provided the necessary checks once we approve these which i'm assuming we will do they go back to the town office and um i believe it said i think i saw somewhere where i believe it's judy has to forward them to if you go down a little more um yeah this town or city clerk shall mail so once there's once it's signed they go back to the town office and i and I did look at this, I looked at Maple Corner and I looked at Adamant and you'll notice on um, Adamant, the whole board of directors signed off and on Maple Corner, the acting interim general manager um, signed off. So either way is okay. If we go back up to where the signature, where the board members are. Yeah, see here, this is all of the Adamant board members, but the, it can also be delegated to signature of authorized agent of corporation, 
company club or association. So Maple Corner had their interim general manager sign off. So that's the only difference that caught my eye when I was looking at these on the. Mm. So we should we should um, probably do them individually. Denise, one thing I'm I'm noticing is this is dated January 2012. Where do you see that, Jared? 2021. Liquor. Oh, I think they just got the date mixed up. They're dyslexic. So yeah, I I, th I I think maybe we just whoever prints this and signs it for us just you fixes know, the date. Good catch. Yeah, just very good. Just somehow note that we assume that this is a mistake and that we're yeah. signing it in January or March 2021, <laughs> regardless of when they signed it. Yeah, I think somebody just got their years mixed up, which is easy enough to do between 12 and 21. But thanks for catching that. Would somebody like to make a motion to um, approve, which one is this? This is Adamant, right? Approve the renewal of the a liquor license for Adamant co-op. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right. second. Very, very good. Any other comments or questions? This, oh, that's my hand. Um, all right. Cliff, would you like to vote? Aye. I'm an aye. Rick? Aye. Sharon? Aye. And John? Yes. Um, Katie, can you please remind me who did the motion in second? I was adding in a language about that edit to the. I I made the motion, Katie, and, then, yeah. and Sharon seconded it. Thank you. I thought Katie wanted to vote for this. Yeah, because she <laughs> no, she lives closer to Maple Corner. <laughs> Either one, okay. They're all equal. Do can I ask a quick question? Does that get do we assign a proxy vote for this or do we, I mean a signature or do we kind of. Uh, oh, we should, yes, we should um, designate someone to sign it on behalf of the board since we're not, so we're doing this. We usually have them in front of us when we do these and then we all sign it, but You're right. um, we could make a motion for this one and Maple Corner to delegate, to authorize somebody to sign on behalf of the board. So you, would you like to do that after we look at Maple Corner? Yeah, I think once we sure. approve Maple Corners, then it would make sense to do that. Assuming we end up approving Maple Corners, if there's no questions. Yeah, let's double check the date. Are you calling it up? There it is. Yeah. The form says 2021 at the top. I don't think you could. Uh... Uh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you'll notice this is where it's different with Adamant, where the general manager signed it. And e either way is okay. Because if you read up at the top, it says whoever they've authorized. Yeah. Whoever right. their authorized representative is. All right. Um, I would make a motion to approve the renewal of the liquor license for Maple Corner store. I'll second it. Okay, any further comments or is everybody ready to vote? Okay, Cliff. Um, I'm an I, but just want to make sure everybody's aware that there's really two applications here. Yeah, I think it's, it's a duplicate, I believe. Yeah, yeah I, as I recall, they had to do two because of the whammy bar. Right. Yeah. And that's what, and that's another difference between Adamat and Maple Corner. You're right. So do we have to approve these as separate items or do we, yeah, I mean that. We can you know, just I, say move to approve both applications. That's good. And okay. just to be further clear, uh, John? the Whammy Bar, last I knew, also had a, a, a liquor dispensary license. So uh, the Maple Corner license is very different. They can sell beer and wine, but the bar is able to dispense alcohol, including liquor. Yeah, and if, if you look at the further down in the um, paperwork, 
I think there's a form there where it shows that what I can't remember his name now where he has taken the course for being a server. Kind of unfair for them to are they still full pricing these folks on the license because they can't I even guess. utilize it. <laughs> I don't Bars know. aren't allowed to be open. Yep, I don't know. That's a good question. Not right. Yeah. Well, and you'll see where he passed the server training and the um, first class server training. Yep. And seller. And seller. So he, he's probably somebody new to doing this. So did we, did we have a motion? I can't remember now. We did. We did. Uh, we did. Cliff commenting on the motion. So yeah, I would propose a friendly amendment to the motion. Could you read the motion back to us, Katie? Yes. Denise Wheeler moved and Rick Keen seconded to approve both renewals of the 2021-2022 liquor license applications for the Maple Corner store. Parentheses, the bar dispenses alcohol, including liquor, and the store can sell. And parentheses. And, and we want to probably say Maple Corner Store and Whammy Bar. Gotcha. Okay, works for me. I'm an I. Okay, I'm an I. Rick? I. Karen? I. And John? Yes. All right, so everybody in Calus can now legally drink. That's what right. we were so we all need, waiting for. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we need we need a um, motion for signature. I would make the motion that we authorize the select board chair to sign off on both of these applications, the one we received from Adam at Co-op, as well as the one we received from uh, Maple Corners Community Store slash Whammy Bar on behalf of the entire select board. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right. Ready to vote? Cliff? Aye. I'm an aye. Rick? Aye. Karen? Aye. John? Yes. Okay, moving on. Um, Chris Cochran would like to talk to us about a request um, and get our and support for North Callis um, to apply to be a village center. So I'll let him um, explain and board members jump in with questions as, as you need answers to. Great. You wanna give us a little background, Chris, on yeah. what's going on and the ultimate goal here and what you're trying to, what this will accomplish when, um, if you get this designation, what that would mean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Chris Cochran, resident of North Callis Village. Um, and I'm here, as Denise said, to request your support um, and assistance um, seeking village center designation for North Callis. Currently, um, this is a state designation process. And currently, Maple Corner, um, East Callis, and Adamant are designated village centers. I think this was done in 2014. North Callis wasn't included because it didn't at the time meet the criteria. You had to have at least one civic building or public building within the village center. And while North Callis was hustling and bustling many, many years ago, um, we don't have one. <laughs> um, but I guess the good news and the, the change um, on the horizon is um, the North Callis uh, Memorial Hall Association has been actively fundraising um, and you know, aims to begin construction on the Memorial Hall renovation this spring. So that is a changing factor um, that I believe will make us eligible for village center designation. Um, the reason we want the designation, uh, and I did email all the residents who were affected in the village and nobody was concerned and everybody was supportive. Um, the reason we want this to seek the village center designation is it allows the North Callis Memorial Hall Association um, it gives them some advantages in several different state granting programs. Um, it also allows them to qualify for tax credits. And the tax credits are particularly helpful to us. Um, they've been very helpful to, um, all, I guess, all the stores in, in each of the villages. Um, the process is pretty simple. Um, the application is pretty straightforward. Um, 
in the past, um, um, what we do is we check in with the state of Vermont and we work with the Regional Planning Commission on the application um, board. The state board, the downtown board reviews these applications once a month. Um, it is an easy, relatively easy application. Um, and I think that's probably, I'm gonna pause there and to see if you have, oh, it, it just is a benefit district. There's no strings that come with it. It just, you know, recognizes, it creates a map, it recognizes the village centers and all the buildings, all the income producing or commercial buildings within that designated area are eligible for tax credits. And the entire village is given priority consideration for state grants. Okay. Um, I do have a few questions. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm curious as to what, you're asking the select board to do just to, to vote to support this? And, yeah. And the yep. The application requires select board support. Um, and I don't know if there's going to be a cost. You know, we, you know, the town pays regional or dues to the regional planning commission. I don't know if this gets rolled up into that. So there may be a cost associated with developing this application. So it would be good to know if CVRPC is going to do it mm -hmm. as part of what they do. Have you checked with them? No. When I emailed you, I asked if you wanted me to find that out before this meeting, and I never, I never heard back. So I just assumed you wanted to get direction from the select board, and then I can follow up with them on on, on costs and time and figure that piece out. Yep. And can I ask a board? quick question? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No. Go ahead. I was. Just, and this is. I'm just quite. Do you know? Have you talked to the planning commission too on like how this relates to any zoning overlays that are in, you know? It, with... it doesn't relate to any zoning overlays, yes. And when I initially um, emailed Denise about getting on the agenda, she copied all the planning commission members. Good, okay. Excellent. Just making sure that they were in. Oh, yeah. 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 Is, there, yeah. is there any, is there any reason? I mean, I heard I have a little placeholder in my mind mm -hmm. for there might be a cost. I'm assuming it's mm -hmm. not a big cost. Yeah. Chris, is there um, is there any reason that we wouldn't or that a town wouldn't want to see this happening in one of its areas of town? Not, I mean, not in my mind. Um, I'll, like I said, it, it just provides grants, you know, gives you priority consideration for state grants. It comes with no obligation other than kind of the cost of producing the application. Applications, once they're approved, are good for eight years. And I think they're renewed um, every eight years. And it's a pretty simple process if nothing's changed. So, um, you know, if you want to improve the quality of life in your communities, this is a good um, thing to do um, to move the ball. And that's so true. You, gonna... you said, you hang on, Denise, just, let me just follow up quickly. Yeah, no, so you said not not in your mind, but I'm, I think you also, if I were to say, but play devil's advocate, you'd still say, yeah, no, I got nothing. I, I read the application. Like I said, it, there's no there's no strings that come along with it. It is a benefit district. It is um, the intent of it is to recognize the historic settlements of our communities. Um, these areas often, you know, struggle for various reasons, um, and the goal of the program is to revitalize them. So, will you be asking the board? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. Uh, maybe Chris can explain. How this differs from a designated downtown and how this relates to Act 250 jurisdiction, if at all? I, um, <clears throat> um, Act 250 jurisdiction currently doesn't, you know, there's no law that recognizes village center designation, so it has no relationship to them. Um, downtown designation is a very different animal. It's, it's a much more labor intensive um, process. Um, it requires communities get, you know, basically a, create a nonprofit organization to support revitalization in the community. It tends to be limited to the larger communities in the state. So Montpelier is our closest, you know, downtown designated downtown district. They have a lot more people and a lot more staff capacity to support that larger organizational process. However, I understand Hardwick is interested, um, but they've been interested for many years. It's just they haven't had the capacity to do it. Um, that designation brings additional benefits for the additional work, um, but it's just, it wouldn't be the right size. You know, there's, there's not enough there there in North Calais to even qualify. Um, uh, hang on, Jan, I wanna make, give the board opportunity to ask questions first. So my question is, will you be coming back to us with a letter that you're gonna want us to sign to submit with the application? 
No, all we need, um, just look at the application. All it needs is, is just a motion in the minutes that the select board um, you know, supported the application. Um, if you want to write a letter, we'd be happy to draft one for you to sign, but that's all that is minimally required or required is a record of you know, a public hearing that the select board reviewed this and made a decision whether to support it or not. Okay. All right. Um, board members, any further questions? And then I'll let Jan ask. Speak. All right. Go ahead. Oh, Sharon. Yeah. I just, so, so is this ripe for us to vote on tonight, Chris, or you're going to mm -hmm. come back with um, a cost and and I heard you offer to draft a letter for us. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, well, I, you know, I'm happy to, it's not needed. I can draft a letter for you if you need it. Um, the question whether it's ripe is really up to you. Um, if you want me to figure out, you know, ask the planning or the regional planning commission if there is a cost associated with this or if they'll roll us into the dues. That's a question. If you want to wait, you certainly can. Um, I, I don't think it's many hours of work. It's it's two or three hours of work to create essentially a map um, of the village center district. And there's, I don't know, eight, 10 buildings. So it shouldn't take them too long. Um, but that's your decision whether this is ripe or you wanna wait until you have that piece of information before you make a decision. I think it would be good for us to know from my perspective, mm -hmm. just how much it might cost Mm -hmm. We have time because we can put this back on the agenda for the 22nd when you provide us that information. Yep. Um, um, so what what I would want is then if you want to do this in two pieces is authorization for me to go check in with the plan or with um, the Regional Planning Commission on what those costs will be. Okay. And I, I think we can certainly I, I'm I don't want to get ahead of us here, but we can, you know, we can kind of give you a, a nod, um, yeah. assuming, assuming that there's minimal. Yeah, minimal. Yeah, I mean, it, it unappreci strikes, it's, unappreciable costs. It strikes me as, you know, equity and fairness. If the other villages are designated, you know, be, you'd be in a difficult position to say, well, no, it's this is, you know, we don't want to spend twenty dollars to get North Gallus designated <laughs> or whatever. Well, the and I want to give Jan a chance oh. to talk because she may know, having the planning commission having done this for the other mm. three, she may know what the cost mm. has been. Jan, do you have any idea? There was no cost for the for the application for either Maple Corner, Adamant, or East Callis. Um, John McCullough did those three almost in one week. Um, I think, I'm not sure who, I, it, my understanding was from John, it was the planning commission, um, central regional, um, the planning, regional planning commission that did the actual drawing of the boundaries of the designated village center. And can, you say that, can you say that again? I didn't catch it. CVRPC did the drawings? Yes, did the boundaries okay. of the designated village center based on the buildings that were there. And the reason, that's my understanding from John what had happened and as far as I know there was no cost involved at that time and I don't think it would be any cost uh, this year either because they're they want as many uh, villages to have a designated village center that they can get um, the other thing that I you know want you all to, to think about is um, when you go out on the interactive map if you ever go out on the interactive map that we have on the website um, you will see there's these little tiny yellow lines that are within the residential village district. And it's the little tiny yellow line um, that, that tells you what's the, in the designated village center. And it's only that area within that designated village center that, that gets the quote unquote money for the tax credits and, and is applying to the grant. So it's it's very it's a very small subset of the of the residential village. Right. District. Yeah, that's a great point. It's just yeah, it's going to be the core of the village. So um, I I I can probably throw my rock a rock and I'd be be able to get the rock outside the village center district in North Callis. <laughs> and it goes yep. to the lake probably. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> or the pond. Yeah. So, I so, think, so I think Jan, what I'm, 
Oh, go, no, go ahead, Sharon. Yeah, no, we might be going to the same place. Jan, by extension, I think you're saying there's, there's not likely to be any cost. I don't think there's going to be any cost because this will be part of something that um, the Regional Planning Center, uh, Commission would, you know, do very willingly. Uh, okay. I don't, I don't recall it, at least in the planning in 2014, I don't recall there ever being a cost and I don't think the town ever had any cost of valve either. Yeah, so, I and I, I guess, and and Chris, you said you don't necessarily need a letter. You just need our vote of support. Yeah, I need a, a vote of support. And then, you know, I, I think I agree with Jan. I don't think it's going to be a cost, but it's a question I, I did not run down because I, I wasn't sure how you wanted to have this conversation. Um, I mean, you could most structure your motion or decision to, you know, say yes, contingent upon, you know, um, yeah me finding additional information what the costs are, then then you don't have to have this as another agenda item again. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna suggest based on the additional information. Um, so we need a motion. So the motion would be that the Cal Select Board supports the application for North Calus to apply to be a designated village center. Is that correct? On the assumption that there are no costs, or uh, or de minimis cost, however you want to define that. I mean, there may be a cost. I would hate to see that. Um, you know, if it costs ten dollars under that motion, it would be void. <laughs> so, well, how about we add to the motion then that um, the motion is under, dependent on under fifty. Yeah, if it's, you know, something to the effects of if there's, we don't have to do this again, but, you know, if it's a minimal cost, then the, you know, the go ahead is still there. Yeah, under 50, under 100. I would say, yeah, under 100 or under. Is there a second? I'll second that. I'll <clears throat> Could I should we make permission? it conditional? Should we make it conditional on the uh, North Cal store being reopened, Chris? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so the world has a store, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you ready to vote? Could I, could I Denise, do? Jan wants to Jan add something to, to our discussion. I, I, I appreciate that you're doing a motion, but I think what would also be very important is to write a letter of support that goes in that Chris can put in with his application that says the town supports this move. Um, I think it looks good to have a letter of support when you're doing such an application and copy the Central Vermont Regional Planning uh, and Bonnie. I think Chris said that it didn't seem like that was necessary. So I would leave it up to your judgment, Chris. It, it's not necessary, but I'm happy to do it. I think it's a nice thing to do, but it's not gonna, um, you know, it's, it's really, if, if you want me to write a letter, it's it's, take me 10 minutes not a big deal yeah well if you think that, that if you think it would be helpful mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure the board would support signing a letter of support okay terrific yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we should maybe we should um have our vote we can it can be five minutes we all know we're going to vote right yes get the get the letter put a stamp on it next time yeah yeah i mean it should be quick since we're in support of it anyways so going back to the motion, are you ready to vote? Rick? Yes. Yes. Okay. Aye. I'm an I'm an I. Sharon? Aye. Um Cliff. Aye. And John. Yep. All righty. But there you go. But we're gonna we're gonna see the letter, right? The board is gonna yeah. see the letter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, just so you know, I'm just the timeline for this, you know, this is going to be like three or four months of, you know, um, you know, I will chat with the with the regional planning commission tomorrow, get a sense of what the costs are, if if they're, um, you know, and I'll Denise, I'll just follow up with you if if there's any, you know, cost or concern to just pass the information on to you to share, um, you know, the application process, you know, it could be as short as a month, um, but my goal would be, you know, once the application is finished. Um, be able to share that with you, and then you can see what your letter of support is supporting. Sounds and good. That can be. Thank you, Thank you for imagine. doing it. Oh, absolutely. No, my pleasure. And this will be a huge help to the folks working to rehab the hall. So yep. thank you for your support and congratulations on your election. And thank you for many years of service.
Rick. Thank you, Chris and Jan. Welcome. welcome to the team, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got a huge learning hey. curve, right, Chris? <laughs> he, he's up for the job, I'm confident. Yeah. Yeah. And if he yeah. is, he's got a lawyer who will help him out. <laughs> That's right. That's true. <laughs> this is true. Um, all right. Um, we have the Lister mapping request. Um, the Listers put in the budget for this fiscal year $2,600. $3, they didn't do any mapping last year. And um, Jan explained at our informational meeting when somebody asked about the budget for the Lister mapping that this would be, and I'll get Jan to double clarify everything, but no mapping was done last year. So this is gonna be two years worth of mapping. Um, last year we budgeted $2,000 and it wasn't used. This year we budgeted $3,600 and they're gonna be able to do two years. Is that correct, Jan? Yeah, I mean, the money in the budget this year might be used, but um, it, it depends on when she issues her bill. This is a contract. Um, Chris Chamberlain is the mapper. She um, took over from um, RJ Turner mapping. She's been okay. doing our mapping for the last five years. Uh, she does it through state specs. So everything is done that meets all of the requirements of the state for mapping and the um, Central Vermont Regional Map uh, Planning Commission, and so there's an interrelationship that all of our parcels, when it's mapped, goes on to the state ANR maps and all of that kind of good stuff. Um, this is just a pro forma contract that she wanted the select board to sign, and it got lost <laughs> um, after I would sent it out late in December, um, knowing that I was going to put this in, ask for it to be in the budget. It got approved in the budget, and I think we're just minding our P's and Q's um, and getting the contract signed for Chris. Okay. And this contract runs from um, April 2019 to April 2021, right? No, it would cover, It's well, it's going to cover whatever it, she won't be done until probably July of 2021. It's going to cover the through the fiscal year of whatever our fiscal year ends, which is 2022. Okay, because in one okay, because in one place it says um, from April 2019 to April 2021, and then it says that the workshop is performed about December 2020 through July 2021. Okay, so that's what we're approving, folks. Would anybody like to make a motion to um, sign this contract? I'll move that. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. <coughs> I'll okay, second. and then we need to have someone authorized to sign on behalf of the board. <coughs> yes, yeah, so in that, in that motion, in my motion, I would authorize uh, Jan Olson to sign on behalf of the select board. I think it has to be select board okay. member. It, it has, has to be, be a board member. It has, it has to be oh. a select board. Oh, okay. Oh well. I think I I make a motion or add to the motion that we authorize Denise and and in the spirit of any Denise can be our designated signer for tonight's meeting. <laughs> All right. Um, is there a second to the amendment? Uh, second. All right. Are you ready to vote? Rick? Yes. I'm an I. Cliff? Aye. John? Yep. And here's Sharon. Would you like to vote, Sharon? Aye. Okay. Very good. All right. So Thank we're you. at a point in the agenda where I would ask that the board go into executive session, discuss personnel matters, and invite the town clerk to join us. Thank you, Jan. 
Yeah, thanks. I'm to thanks, I Jen. Thank you and uh, for supporting. And I'm so sad that it's going to be mud season because we're supposed to be out doing inspections starting this week. And we should have gone today, darn it all. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Orca. Katie? I have a question. I usually call Rose or, or email Rose at the end of the meeting and she takes, I sent her like a fill in the blank form and then she fills in for me, you know, if there was anything to report after executive session, the, the time that someone made a motion to um, adjourn, who seconded it. Mm -hmm. I wonder who you'd like um, me to email with that request. Who would like to do that tonight? I'm glad to, you just, uh... Tell me what you need to get. You just need to have the time. Any we'll the time tell you motion, motion yeah, for adjourn. Yeah. yeah, Katie will send you the blanks to fill in. Okay, Katie, you've got my email, right? Yeah, yeah, you do. Okay, and it sounds like Sharon, you'll help Rick make sure he knows, like, if there's a statement that the board wants coming out of executive session. Yep. Yeah, we're always really careful to think about, be yeah. thoughtful about how what are we reporting. Yeah, awesome. right. Um, it looks like you're going to return to other updates tonight. Do you want me to call back in or does someone want to text me or, or will, will you let me know well, if there's anything substantial there? I, I can't see. What time is it? 8.06. It's after eight. Yeah. So I'm imagining that by the time we get done, it might be 8.30, quarter of nine. So if we're looking to try to adjourn by around nine, we might not need to do these updates i just routinely put them on there just in case there is something so it doesn't get lost in the shuffle gotcha good night everybody thank you thank you katie hi katie, katie. thank you yeah all, all right, right. Did, do we need to have a second to that motion and vote before we actually go into the executive session yes we should i second the motion Okay, ready to vote. Rick? Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon? Aye. John? Aye. And Cliff? Aye. All righty. The recording has stopped. Oh, so that's Orca? No, that's us now. Orca, thank oh, you. Bye bye. Bye, thank Jerome. You.